the topic of discussion in today, today's class is moving coordinate system. Now, during the review of elementary mechanic, mechanics principle, Newtonian mechanics principle, you probably recall this picture. We have a frame which is fixed and which is given by x prime y prime z prime and there is another frame which is given by this set of axes x y z. Now, a particle which is moving in space, the position vector measured with respect to this frame is r prime and with respect to this frame, frame is r. Now, if the location of this origin of this particular frame is capital R with respect to this frame, then we can write R plus R is equal to R dashed. This is just from vector addition. Now, if this is the case, then R double prime, R double dot is equal to capital R double dot equal to capital uh, sorry small r prime double dot. Now, if we multiply this with the mass of this object m in both sides. So, this is the acceleration which is measured with respect to this particular frame. So, let us say this frame is moving with respect to this frame, this is fixed and this is moving. So, we see that m r double or m r r prime double dot is the force which is measured with respect to this primed frame inserted on this particular object. Now, if we similarly on the on so this one gives this, this one will give a force which is measured the force which is measured from this particular frame insert being wor working on this particular object. Okay. And of course, there is this additional term m r double dot. So, we see that now forget about the arrows. Now, this primed frame or this particular frame let us consider this to be fixed and this to be moving. And we have discussed that if this is moving with an uniform velocity, that means if r dot is equal to v equal to some constant, then we immediately see r double dot is equal to 0 and these two forces measured forces are equal. Okay. So, that means, if this moving frame is moving with an uniform velocity, then it is called a inertial frame. But if the velocity is not constant, that means, the acceleration there is a non-zero accelerating term. That means, this equation in this equation all the term survives and the force inserted on the object which is measured from I mean depending on whether we measured the force on this object with respect to a fixed frame or respect to a moving frame, the amount of force is changing. And this additional term is called a fictitious force, fictitious or pseudo force. It is not a real force. It is coming up only because this this frame is moving with some non uniform velocity. So, this fictitious or pseudo forces are what makes the life makes life really difficult when we are sitting and when, when we are trying to measure something with respect to a moving coordinate system. Now, in this chapter we will be discussing a special type of moving coordinate system or so which are actually rotating coordinate systems. So, the situation is as follows. 
Okay, I will just keep it there. So, let us say this is our fixed frame of reference and this is our moving frame of reference which share the origin common. So, the origin is common. Okay. So, if this is my x prime y prime z prime then this is my x y and z. So, and see here what we have discussed is a general motion it could be a translation motion it could be a rotation motion, but here the situation described is a pure rotational motion the origin is common and let us assume that there is some axis along which this one frame is executing a rotational motion with respect to the fixed frame. So, this purple frame this one is fixed. Okay. So, this three sets of axis they are fixed in space and the other three sets of axis they are rotating in space and the rotation rotating with this the origin remains a common point between these two frame and there is an inst axis of instantaneous rotation let us call it n cap and the rotation is taking place around this particular axis. So, this is the situation we are going to describe in today's class. Okay. So, so this is an this is a case which is case of rotation. Now, let us assume a situation where the rotation is uh, with an uniform velocity. So, let us assume that the velocity is uh, the rotational velocity which is described here is omega which is some kind of a constant. Okay. So, let us see let us assume omega equal to constant inter I mean omega vector is constant just a minute. So, this is my direction and the rotational velocity omega which is the velocity of rotation of this rotation is a constant. It, so, omega vector constant means not only the direction the direction of the vector is constant, but also its magnitude is a constant of time. Is this equation uh, I mean so my question is does this uniform rotation still in I mean gives rise to a fictitious force the answer is yes, because any rotation even if even if it is an uniform rotation it will definitely give rise to a fictitious force for the very simple reason. Let us assume a point moving on this circle with an uniform velocity omega. Okay. So, the direction of velocity okay. so probably we all know this if the circle I mean if the point is moving on this particular frame in clockwise direction then the direction of velocity is axis of velo uh, axis of this angular velocity omega is out of the plane and if it is going in a clockwise direction then the direction is inside the plane. Okay. So, if I hope we are familiar with this notation. Now, if omega is constant in this case think of it the velocity the corresponding linear velocity if the radius vector is r then they are related I mean the speed v and this omega is related by v equal to r omega. Okay. Fine, but the direction of v is changing continuously on this circular loop right is not it. So, although the direction although the magnitude of velocity remains fixed the direction is constantly changing. So, we can say even if for omega equal to constant v is not a constant right. So, that is why even if there is an uniform rotation around a fixed axis with a uniform angular speed does not mean that it is a uh, you know inertial frame you know, inertial system a velocity a rotational velocity will always give rise to a rotational motion will always give rise to a linear velocity which is not a constant with time. So, that means there is always a pseudo force acting on this. So, our job is to find out the pseudo force. Okay. Now, let us for a second forget about for, for now let us forget about this constant omega 
it is not important we will just do a derivation for a general omega. Let us assume that there is a vector which is So, let us assume that there is a vector which is given by represented by g. So, let us say this is the vector, okay, some vector. So, okay, so, it need not necessarily be starting from the origin, it could be anywhere. So, this is a general vector. Now, this vector will have components in both the frames. So, g will have we can resolve the components of g in the fixed frame that is the primed frame or we can resolve the components of g in the rotating frame. Now, once we do that and please remember whether although the frame is rotating does not matter if we write the vector g, the vector g remains invariant whether we represent it in this frame or the other frame. So, we can write g to be equal to g 1 prime i cap plus g 2 prime j cap plus g 3 prime k cap. So, sorry, sorry i cap prime j cap prime and k cap prime. So, let us assume that the for the fixed frame we have k for example, k cap prime i cap prime and j cap prime and for the moving frame let us have i cap, j cap and k cap. Okay. So, now onwards whenever we will be referring to a moving coordinate system, we will be uh, oh sorry whenever we will be discussing a fixed coordinate system, if there is a fixed and a moving coordinate system, the fixed coordinate system will be denoted by prime and the moving coordinate system will be denoted by this non primed numbers non non primed uh, indices okay so so we just resolve the components this is in the fixed frame and this is in the rotating frame so the equation what we uh, what i have written here is nothing but equivalent of writing g fixed which is the vector g in fixed frame equal to g rot the vector g in rotating coordinate system right now if we want to take the time derivative of this vector how how do i how how are you going to do that so of course we can just take time derivative of both sides of this so which will be given by d g d t. For left hand side we will have d g d t fixed which will be given by time derivative of this one. Now, please now note i prime j prime k prime these are uh, unit vectors in the fixed frame and because they are fixed in space their time derivative is always 0. So, if we take the time derivative of this one, it will be simply d g 1 prime d t i cap prime plus d g 2 prime d t j cap prime plus d g 3 prime d t j cap prime right. And on this side, now this will be equal to d g d t rot. Okay, the because if we take the time derivative in rotating frame, it will also be the same time derivative, right? So we can write this as d sorry, i cap plus d g two d t j cap plus d g three d t k cap plus 3 additional terms because i, j and k they are also changing direction with time. So, we have g 1 d i cap d t 
plus g 2 d j cap d t plus d 3 uh, g 3 d k cap d t right and this is equal to d g d t rot. Okay. So, one side we have d g d t fixed, one side we have d g d t rot which are which has to be equal because irrespective of which frame we represent the vector, the time the vector itself and also their time derivative has to be equal. So, this two has to be equal right. Now, if we examine this the first term is so, if we now write d g d t rot separately, we see that d g d t rot is equal to the first three terms is nothing but d g d t with respect to rotating frame, right. Look at the first three terms, it is the instantaneous representation of the vector, the time derivative of the instantaneous representation of the vector in the rotating frame. And for the other three terms, we have to see. Now, let us consider this for a moment. Let us say we have this some vector A and this is an direction n, there is a vector a, let us say this angle is some fixed angle, let us call it phi okay. and this is some vector a. Now, this vector is rotating around this particular fixed direction with maintaining this fixed angle. So, the situation is something like this. So, let us say I have a red pen in hand and I have a green pen in hand. So, let us say this red pen represents the fixed direction and the green pen represents the rotating vector around this particular direction okay. and this angle is fixed. So, it is rotating something like this. Okay. So, the rotation is something like this. So, the angle is fixed and the direction of this vector is changing. Now, if the direction of this vector is changing with time, okay. so we have A here and at a later time it is it moves to a position sorry this picture is not very clear i'll try to draw a better picture right so so whatever happens this is n and this is a the tip of the vector a will remain on this cone right so in a later time it will go here now this vector is not exactly a vector but it's a vector which is a plus delta a delta a is this one right now what is delta a delta a if you just a minute. Right. Now, if this angle is your delta theta, then we can write delta A, the magnitude of delta A will be uh, A times the magnitude of A times delta theta right and what is the direction of this delta a the direction of delta a in the limiting case try to realize this it's a direction which is perpendicular to both n cap and a right because so in the limiting case when a and a plus delta a they are almost coinciding on, on each other it's some something similar to the construction we did for when we were determining uh, the time derivative of th uh, the derivative of theta theta cap and r cap in plane polar coordinate system. So, 
in the same notation we can on, on the in the same line of thinking we can write delta a vector is equal to a times delta theta uh, sorry this will be delta a will be equal to yeah so right it will be the magnitude will be a delta theta and the direction will be n cross a cap right now n cross a cap a cap being a unit vector along a direction so we can absorb this here and we can rewrite it as n cap delta theta cross a right so change in delta a the magnitude of this will be as I discussed already the magnitude will be a times delta theta and the direction will be perpendicular to both a and delta a. So, we can write delta a vector is equal to n capped cross a times delta theta or actually we can write delta theta outside also n capped cross a times delta theta. Now, if we try to take the time derivative of d a I mean time derivative of a then we have to divide the this thing by delta t on both sides this whole thing by delta t and we have to take limit when delta t goes to 0. Now, if we do that we immediately see your d a d t is nothing but n cross a times theta dot. Okay. So, this theta dot is this angle the angular change of this vector and theta dot is nothing but omega if, if omega is the instantaneous angular velocity of rotation. Okay. So, what we can do is we can and we can substitute this with omega and please note that omega vector is nothing but omega n cap right. So, because n cap defines the direction of omega this is the direction of this rotation vector and omega which is equal to theta dot is the instantaneous speed of rotation right. So, we can write omega vector as omega cross n cap. So, with this we can simply write d a d t equal to omega cross a. So, this is a very 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 important relation. So, the result says for pure rotational motion around a fixed axis the time derivative can be represented by omega cross a right. Now, we use this result for this three time derivative. Okay. So, d i d t will be omega cross i d j d t will be omega cross j and d k d t will be omega cross k. Now, if we employ that here, so I am removing I mean this part we do not need that anymore whatever we have had to prove we proved. So, you see this first term of d g d t rot is d g d t measured at the uh, with respect to the instantaneous x y z axis and the second term will be g 1 remains g 1 into omega cross i cap plus g 2 into omega cross j cap plus g 3 into omega cross k cap. Okay. So, if we write it little more uh, we rearrange it we take omega cross out from each of this and write g omega cross g 1 i cap plus g 2 j cap plus g 3 k cap then what we get is this d g d t rot plus omega cross g right. And now 
uh, for the left hand side d g d t the time derivative with respect to rotating frame is equal to time derivative with respect to fixed frame and that is equal to equivalent of writing. Uh, okay. So, this one instead of taking with uh, with respect to rotating frame we can take it with respect to fixed frame. So, instead of d g d t rot, uh, rot we can write d g d t fixed. Please understand that this is equivalent of writing d g d t fixed. The entire bracket when we use an entire bracket that means, that the time derivative is uh, executed with respect to the fixed frame and when we write a subscript type that means, the time derivative measured with respect to the instantaneous position of the value uh, instantaneous position of the uh, fixed frame. Now, for fixed frame the instantaneous position and the overall time derivative is the same because it is a fixed frame. For rotating frame it will be there is one part which is the instantaneous time derivative and there is a term which is omega cross g right. So, we finally, get the very important relation what we are looking for right which is please remember please note that it is derived for a general vector g. We have not assumed any specific properties or any specific characters of g. So, that means, it will be true for any arbitrary vector in the three dimensional space. Now, if we uh, understand this then we can essentially you know we can operate this particular I mean we can have uh, this type of operation for any vector in the three dimensional space. So, we can replace this we can get rid of this g and we can create an operator which is d d t fixed equal to d d t dot equal to omega cross a plus omega cross. So, what it means is the time derivative which is measured the time derivative with respect to a fixed frame of reference is equivalent of time derivative measured with respect to a rotating frame of reference plus omega cross omega being the instantaneous velocity of rotation cross that particular vector. Now, if we operate this on the standard position vector r what do we get? We get d r d t is equal to d r d t fixed we are just writing f for it equal to d r d t rot. Okay. So, let us plus omega cross a or omega cross r. Okay. So, what is this d r d t fixed means? That means, if we are measuring a velocity. So, d r d t is velocity. So, if the velocity is measured with respect to a fixed frame let us call it v 0 okay. and so that will be a combination of the velocity the same velocity please understand the vector g or r or whatever we put in here this vector is frame independent. The vector remains a uh, vector is a quantity. Okay. So, vector does not matter if, if we measure it in with respect to this frame or that frame the vector remains represents the same quantity. So, the velocity we see which is measured with respect to a fixed or inertial frame if that is v 0 then the same velocity measured with a non inertial frame which shares the same origin as the with the inertial frame will be v where v is the velocity measured in that non inertial frame plus omega cross Okay. So, now you bring it in terms of uh, so for example, let us take an example okay. our earth is a rotating coordinate system. We take it as fixed, but it is not strictly speaking it is not a fixed frame. So, when we are measuring some velocity on earth. So, in principle as our frame of reference is earth and now if we measured measure the velocity from outer space which we, we go to some spaceship which is fixed in outer space. So, that is the the same velocity if we measure from outer space will be v 0 the same the velocity we are measuring from earth is v. So, we will see that this is related by v 0 equal to v plus omega cross r. So, in that case omega will be the angular velocity of earth's rotation. Okay. So, in next class we will start from this point and we will see how this uh, 
how this will lead to any other fictitious forces. Thank you.